library. Oh, hello there. What sort of monster puts candy puts candy behind a locked door? Right, right. Oh yeah, Mr. Nirit works. Uh, Mr. Nikri, Nurkri, Nakri, Nakreed. Sorry, Nuncreed. Sorry, Nuncreed works weird hours sometimes. Of course he does. Hey, cat. How about you? When do I work? No. What's your name? <laughs> Luca Van Horn. You new here? Yep. <clears throat> Not by choice. Sex family moved often. This is the girl that they were looking for. Okay, so the two women were looking for her. Giving her little time to establish any real connections. Mm. She would tell you she prefers it that way. I'm looking for my friend Rolo. He didn't come by. He did. He didn't come home last night. So he's missing. I guess so. Like missing, missing. Yes, honey. Missing, missing. Again, the darker bubble with the writing, for me, it's kind of hard to see. I'll explain in a minute. Like I said. Uh, does that sort of thing happen around here a lot? Uh, happen a lot around here? Luca shifted his feet uncomfortably. Mm, I know he is. Well, that sucks. Yeah. So I should probably get going. Hey, wait up. What? Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. I'm coming with you. What? So, so says the lucky un, uh, unlucky penny. Okay. Unlucky? <laughs> exactly, Luca. Yep, well, technically it's landed on heads. It landed on heads. Leave this kid to find his friend on a find his friend alone but I always do the opposite okay oh that's kind of like me and uh, me and Rolo I guess Rolo is my unlucky penny that settles it a person should never be without their unlucky penny oh that's so cute let's go find it the name's back Pleasure to meet you, Beck. Oh, so they said unlucky because she's a black cat, so unlucky. I like that. Again, subtle details like that. A black cat that's unlucky. Dog with fur to like his dog shit on the grass, so it fertilizes. I like that. I think that's very interesting. And all the weird, subtle things here and there. Very interesting. Clever writing. I like that. I suppose. And I like how the color of the bubble matches the character. So, again, for my, uh, we'll talk in a minute. I suppose I could use some help. Try to keep up. Aww, Luca got a friend. Joey, have you seen Roller around? No, sorry, Luca. I have, uh, <clears throat> I had my eyes in, had my eyes in the dirt for the beetles. I can't seem to find any. Interesting. When bees, when insects start to vacate an area, that means there's nothing there for them to feed on, so they leave. They vacate the premises, or they're dead. It's one of the two. Which is why when the bee population dipped, people were like, the fuck? Because bees pollinate. Bees help flowers grow. Just, yeah, just interesting that they're talking about insects, and this boy is missing bees, and then you find the factory with all the mysterious stuff so I, I it's all connected for sure and Rolo missing all connected okay I can't seem to find any uh he never came home last night do you think it's because he's been it's been colder than normal remember at the beginning she said there was a cold chill in the air and certain insects don't stick around when it's cold so that's also another thing also I don't see why it would have given oh wait I don't see why that would have anything to do with Rolo. No, the beetles. No, the beetles. Do you think that the temperature confused them or confused their uh, uh, clandestine routine or something? Rhythm, sorry. Who's to say? I'm no beetologist. Beetologist, okay. I said that funny. 
Just keep your eye out for him, would you? Of course. Again, now it makes sense why he was like... Luca peeked up at the beehive. It appeared to be deserted. Huh, that's strange. Makes sense. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. Gotcha. The Valentine Mansion loomed over every other building in town, both figuratively and literally. Okay, still nothing here. Let's go back. Yay! Running with friends! Curious. Just trying to see if there's any charms or something. Keep out? Dang, they boarded it up any- uh, boarded- the the boarded up the way in. Oh! The fuck? I knew it. Okay. Oh. Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. Toxic the nearby waste. grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Oh. Uh, is that supposed? Uh, is that the sort of thing normal around here, <laughs> right? <laughs> because puddles of glowing ooze are definitely not what I expected when not, uh, from this place, right? I have no idea what this stuff is. Well, next step obviously is it. <laughs> Well, the next step obvious. Oh, well, the next obvious step is science. For science, and what is science? And what does science suggest? Poke it with a stick. Luca, seriously. Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree smile. branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. Okay. First, small buds which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. Nice. What the? Cool. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Oh. oh. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Okay. So the science tells us this gunk is weird as hell. That part. Uh, yeah, isn't that dang- it seems dangerous. Oh lord, these two. <laughs> Listen to his voice. Hey, Tish, looks like the- look what the cat dragged in. Yep. Oh, yep. I don't have time for this right now, Iggy. Oh, uh, isn't that- okay. Uh, don't say like- uh... Blah, blah, blah. Don't say things like that, it hurts Tish's feelings. Tish's feelings? Isn't that right, Tish? Yep. She looks fine to me. Well, hello. I don't think we have been properly introduced. I'm Iggy. The name, uh, it's a, Iggy's the name. This is my comp uh, <laughs> compatriot, Trish, Tish. Yup. You've probably heard of us. Can't say that I have. Love it. I'll forgive you for this uh, for this one for this once, on an account you you've been you new around here. On you being new around here. <clears throat> uh, why would you hang out? I said, uh, why would you hang out with this dud? Wow, really, really, Iggy. Oh, he seems pretty all right. Iggy, why don't you? Uh, <clears throat> why don't? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Why do you have to be so you, right? Has he ever told you that his parents uh, skipped out on him? <gasps> Iggy, no. Shut up. It's true. They got tired of having such a pathetic kid and left him. Oh, sorry. Iggy, I'm only going to say this one time. 
don't talk about my family. Iggy, I think you should take the hint, honey. <laughs> well, look who's got who's grown a backbone since they're the girl around. Wow. First his pops croaked. Damn. Then his mom finally couldn't take it anymore and bounced. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city, but a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. That part. Beck took a deep breath and thought. Well, time to bust out the tickle? Strange. Well, time to bust out the strange. She's just staring at him. Like cats do. No, a cat's just giving me the death stare. That's what's happening. All right, Luca. Looks like you need a, a little uh, mud bath. Silence. What's wrong with the new kid? You're about to, we're about to pound your friend. Beck stared in silence, the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. It's weird when people don't talk. Yep. Stop being a weirdo. <laughs> I love it. More nothing. Uh, hello? Are you kind, some kind of wackadoo? Makes sense, wackadoos travel in packs. Ugh, duh. At the sight of Iggy taunting back, something in Luca snapped. Iggy's smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Uh, Iggy's clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. <gasps> Luca! You jerk, my clothes are ruined. I'm gonna... Iggy's voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. Struggle. It's real. I don't feel so good. Ugh. <gasps> it aged him. I'm sorry, I just... Oh, shit. Yep. That was intense. Iggy gotta... Iggy gotta get back, right? It's gonna be okay, right? Nothing about this seems okay. The person at the warehouse. The strange ooze and what it did to Iggy. Was Rolo caught up in all of this? That part. We have to find Rolo. You took the words right out of my mouth. Our new little friend. You go, Beck. Property of the Valentine Fertilizer Company? Really? Looks old. Theory. Where are there? Uh, is there? Well, there, little buddies. You startled me. What the fuck are you doing here? What in the dickens are you up to in this part of town? We were just looking for Rolo. Oh, you haven't heard the good news? Rolo showed up safe and sound a bit ago. Really? So, where was he? It's really, it's funny, really. He got lost and turned around in the woods. Okay. They can be dis uh, 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 dis disorienting, you know. I'm starting to get that impression. Okay. Rolo's at his house now, getting, uh, getting some well-deserved rest. Liar. Wow, that's a relief. 
you two should slug along. You two should shrug along before you get yourself uh, before you get lost yourselves. Skr along, excuse me. Yeah, come on back. Can't wait to introduce you to Rolo. Oh, that's me. I said. Oh, that reminds me. Luca, your grandmother was looking for you. See, see, this is why your little ass shouldn't have the house. I mean, still, it's good your friend's okay, which I think, I think Mr. Kerr is fucking lying, but still. She was? Mm-hmm, about to get that ass spanked. Mm-hmm. She was worried sick. Something tells me he's lying, but we'll see. You should march straight home. I guess. Beck, your folks uh, might be getting worried too. I'll walk you home. I need to talk with Nellie about work anyway. Beck glanced toward Luca. I guess, uh, okay. I guess all well, all's well that ends well. I'll enter you to Rolo tomorrow. Sure. Glad, I, glad he's okay. Rolo was safe. A wave of relief washed over Luca, which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. That part. Gran is going to kill me. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter 4. Our harvest awaits. That just sounds ominous, right? Is it me? Is it me? Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, stealing himself for Gran's wrath. Okay. Gran? I'm home. Everything's fine. Gran? Is she not home? I just wanted to see him do it. It's so cute. Oh, you can close the drawer. That's so cool. Oh, you can close stuff. Nice. Hold on. Gran. I know I wasn't supposed to go anywhere. I just wanted to help look for Rolo. Gran? See? I think Kearns lied. And now he has Beck. See, she's not even here. Yeah, Kern's lied. See, okay, see, remember I was saying earlier, I think he's behind some shit. Gran? Roxy came over. She was worried about him. So I figured I would, I would, you know, I figured you wouldn't mind if I helped look for him. It turns out Rolo is safe and sound. Luca was alone. I knew it. The house was empty. So Gran's not back yet? I guess that's a good thing. Nothing to do but wait uh nothing to do do now but uh sleep, I guess. <laughs> he just walks up. Luca was sitting by the pond. Story time. Listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Okay. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Hmm. Bees. Okay. There's a theme. Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Okay. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Wow. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Interesting choice. 
With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. Mm. The wrong choice, but I respect it. Okay. The pond began to freeze over. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Interesting. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Luca scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad, I don't understand. I love the music. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. Wait, like that always the truth. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Dad, look out! His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, we have to go. Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you, you have to run. The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. Forest Gump reference. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. Wow. Dad, I don't understand. Right. What does all this mean? Right? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Creepy dream. Ice. Cold weather. Insects. Luca's eyes struggled to focus on the walkie-talkie. Rolo? Faintly, he could hear Rolo amongst the noise. Luca? Rolo, is that you? Luca? More squares. There! Rolo, it's in the middle, it's the middle of the night. Luca, thank God. Listen. I don't know how long this thing will work down here. Down here? See? Knew it. Rolo's voice was coming through more clearly now. But some words were still just static. Listen to me. Someone grabbed me yesterday. What? The man in the hazmat suit? It was, took me to some sort of, I think I'm underground. Oh, underground? W are you okay? Kinda. They seem to be more interested in, for now at least. Mr. Kern said you made it home, back home safe. Kern, no. Trust. Kern's no trust. See? See? Knew it. He's... Hold me somewhere. Okay. Hold on. Someone's coming. The signal went silent. Rolo? Rolo, where are you? Luca held still, waiting for a response. His pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Okay, I think they're gone. Getting worse. I can barely hear you. Lolo's voice began to fade. Losing signal. Not much time. Mission control. Okay. You need to the treehouse. The treehouse. With that, the signal died for good. So go to the treehouse? What is he trying to say about the treehouse? What at the treehouse? The antenna! He wants me to use the antenna in the treehouse to get a better signal. Rolo, you're a genius. I don't think that's what he means. I don't think that's what Rolo meant. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. Okay. 
hook the walkie talkie to the radio in the treehouse. I don't think that's what he meant. Luca heard a group of footsteps approaching. Oh! He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. Okay. <gasps> so, we all understand our roles. You can count on me. I'm still thinking we need more time. This might, uh, this wasn't the original plan. Mr. Tolliver paused, shifting his eyes to one side. We're all in danger now. Okay. I, for one, refuse to stand by idly while these dangers persist. Refuse. Hear me. You just keep your, uh, wits about you. Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. <sighs> I'm, with, <coughs> I'm with you, Mr. Tolliver. You're right. You can count me in. Why do women gotta have the backbone? You're a man. Good man up. Man up. Okay, I just wish we could have made the details with the heiress of uh, heiress valentine her resources would have still come in handy really as i said i had no time to contact her after you called me this morning plans changed how's luca holding up he's fine we should lose. Uh, <clears throat> we shouldn't lose sense of se a sense of the fact that the, 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 that this is all right. The fact that this is all. I know very well what all of this is for. We have no choice. Operation Spark Pl Spark Plug has now uh, has now in operation. Ob objective. Sorry. New objective. Are we agreed? The three uh, shared a determined look. Good. We'll reconvene after the festival. Oh, funny. Okay. Gran? Why are you meeting with Miss Fratelli and Mr. Tulliver late at night? Bitch, why aren't you home? Hi, Luca! <laughs> You scared me. How long have you been there? Just a few minutes. Earlier today, I saw Mr. Tulliver and your gran enter the diner today. A uh, diner together. Okay, when my shift at the newsstand was over, they still hadn't left. So I used this great tool of any... In uh, are you, uh, bleh, I used the greatest tool of any investigative, investigative reporter. You don't know what that is. Time. When they left, I trailed him. I trailed them here. What do you think they're up to? Whatever it is, they seem to have organized and, de and determined. They mentioned the festival. Yeah, I heard that too. Your grand has been doing any anything different recently. Has your grandma been doing anything different recently? Anything strange? She got a phone call this morning and rushed out, rushed out the door. A call from Mr. Herman Tulliver. Herman, sorry. Herman Tulliver, it seems. She was either furious or, or terrified. Or both. Look up, uh, Luca, be careful out there in them streets. I think we might be in the middle of a scoop of the uh, of a lifetime. I will. Uh, aren't you coming out? Nah, I gotta <laughs> stake out here for a bit, for a little bit longer. See you, Luca. I better get to the treehouse. Okay. Mm -hmm.